In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And woe to the priest whose rector calls her up at 7 o'clock on Saturday evening and says, I can't preach tomorrow, will you? So. It sort of spoiled half the Warriors game and much of the Olympics for me last night. But I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to see you. And now that I've made my excuses, it really doesn't matter what I do because you'll forgive me because I had so little time to work on this. I did seek, uh, I did receive a little help from two of my colleagues uh, whom I got in touch with. One was Ricardo who sent me an old sermon of his about the other time the Beatitudes show up in the scriptures, which I enjoyed reading, but, uh, and I'm going to share a little with you. And I got a nice copy of a sermon from Ernest, who's up in Mountain View today, and it's very earnest, so I'm not sure how much I can steal from that. <laughs> but I am going to try to talk a little bit about today's gospel, which is very familiar to you, I hope, because it lists all the things we ought to be trying to do to be blessed and avoiding the things that we, and so far as we can. I'd, I'd like to share, first of all, some things that Ricardo wrote some years ago. I've taken out some of his notes to himself, when to smile, when to laugh, when to step back, when to pause. It's very good. There are a lot of good stage directions. If you ever have to give a sermon, it will help you with the body work. Today's Gospel reading from Luke is referred to as the Sermon on the Plain, as opposed to Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. Matthew's version of the Beatitudes, the blessings, which we did not hear just now, has an ethereal and poetic feel to it. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the pure in heart, the peacemakers. It's the version we know best, and I like to think it of, of as a sort of Beatitudes for a sen sensitive folk singer. Luke's version, on the other hand, is direct and literal. Blessed are you poor, you that hunger, you that weep, you that are reviled. And then something not found in Matthew's Beatitudes, woe to you rich, you that are full, you that laugh and make merry, you when all men speak well of you. This version is blunt and is directed right at us. It's like the Beatitudes from an angry punk rocker. It's no wonder most Christians surveyed prefer Matthew's sweeter tone. But I think there's much to commend in Luke's straightforward approach. Jesus is telling it like it is. He's saying, look, I got some good news. Blessed are you, outcasts. And I got some bad news. Woe to you, in crowd. Jesus is basically turning the high school hierarchy on which our culture is based upside down. Today's gospel epitomizes a phrase I heard all the time when I was in seminary, it was a charge for us as priests and preachers, like Christ, go forth to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And you know, as harsh as that may sound, it really does sum up the Christian message. Because time and again in the Gospels, and especially Luke, Jesus upends our human expectation of who and what is valuable in the kingdom of God when he calls the poor hungry, weeping, and reviled, blessed, Jesus states what they, that they are already in God's sight. They aren't receiving a breath, blessing from God, they are innately blessed because God holds them dear and because a divine spark has always resided within their souls. The grace waiting to happen when God flicks the switch to turn it on. A concern for the poor and the outcast runs throughout the Gospel of Luke, and Jesus shows compassion for them over and over again, frequently to the detriment of the wealthy or powerful because of their desperate circumstances. The needy often have no other resource 
but God to rely on. Ernest, who's preaching today in Mountain View, had this to say about the, this form of the Beatitudes. Can't you see them standing right here beside me? <laughs> A form of the Beatitudes is found in both the Gospels of Matthew and of Luke. They probably had several sources, so they're not phrased quite the same, but they are obvious similarities in their writing about them. Scholars suggest that Luke wrote his Beatitudes for Gentiles, focusing on the poor. So what do we make of Luke's Beatitudes? Specifically, what do they mean for us who are on the wrong side of Luke's equation? Compared to most people in the world, most people who ever lived in the world, we're rich. None of us is going hungry. We live in comfort in a safe and enriching area. Despite COVID, most of us are able to do pretty much whatever we want. Compared to most of the human race, we're having a good time and hopefully people speak well of us. Luke wrote his Beatitudes for Gentiles, his focus on the poor. Luke's setting for Jesus' Beatitudes is on the plain. For Luke, a mountain, I can't help thinking of my fair lady, but pardon me. Uh, <laughs> For Luke, a mountain was a place of prayer, of vision, a mountaintop experience. So Luke begins his version of the Beatitudes this way. Jesus then came down with them and stopped at a piece of level ground where there was a large gathering of his disciples with a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. This message is for everybody, not just the chosen. In English, we might consider that the Beatitudes are distorted by the word blessed. Sounds very pious, but the word really means something like, how happy, a totally different concept. Luke splits his list between blessings and woes. Here's the way this passage is uh, translated in the Jerusalem Bible. Happy are you poor. Yours is the kingdom of God. Happy are you who are hungry now. You'll be satisfied. Happy, how blessed. You who weep now, you shall laugh. Happy you when people hate you, drive you out, abuse you, denounce your name as criminal on my account. Rejoice when that day comes and dance for joy then your reward will be great in heaven. So having read these two partial sermons and thinking about speaking before you this morning, I decided that maybe I'll just read them again, but I do want to say a few things. We are blessed. We live in a blessed place. We look out at clean air. Maybe not for long, but for a while. Those of us who work with this food pantry here know that there are people very close to us who don't live like most of us do. They're not sitting beside us physically but they are sitting beside all of us. And we would do well to remember them and to give thanks for our ability to help them. Blessed are you if you remember the poor and do something about it. Not just say, oh dear, isn't it a shame that this man is homeless and begging at the stoplight. Giving him a dollar isn't gonna save his life. And probably nothing St. Luke's does is going to save his life. But where there are certainly actions that we can all take politically, socially, volunteering to make life better, to make better use of our own lives. If we're lucky, if we're fed, if we're warm, if we have a place to sleep, what are we doing with our goodness? What are we doing with our salvation? What are we doing with our safety? 
We're good people. We should act as if we're good people. I started this sermon last night and I thought of sermons I had heard on similar topics and wondered if I could recount some of those in my mind and steal something from some other preacher. And then I remembered one Sunday I had stayed overnight in a motel at a small town in the Central Valley of California. It was Saturday night, so Sunday morning I saw there was an Episcopal church in town. I thought, oh, go, that would be kind of fun to go to a different church. So I went in and I found that the rector was preaching a series of sermons on the Beatitudes, and he had gotten to honor thy father and mother. And he preached for about 45 minutes on his and our fathers and mothers and how we should treat them. And when I staggered forth, I was grateful that I hadn't gotten there for thou shalt not commit adultery because I just <laughs> thought I just cannot. I don't think I would have lasted. I would have crept out. So I will not speak about adultery today. I will not speak about the Beatitudes. I ask your prayers for Ricardo, who went home ill yesterday. Some of you know, many of you know. He's been tested for COVID, which he does not have. He just has the flu, I think. And uh, although I missed part of the Warriors game and part of the Olympics, um, I'm glad to be here this morning. And I'm glad to be able to share the Beatitudes with you. And let's try to live up to some of them. Maybe we should each take one. I wish you well as we try to ease out of our quarantine situation. I'm looking forward to the day, maybe even the next time I preach, when I look out and see your entire faces looking up at me, and not just these omnipresent blue masks. It's an odd color, isn't it, actually? So let's go in peace and go in health and take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and remember to whom we give thanks. Amen.